Hello, my name is Scott Garrison. You may remember me as Scott the Barber or just as Ron and Carla's son. I've been involved in our community since opening Scott's Barbershop on the southeast corner of 3rd and Main in 1998. Now I'm back in the same building as Garrison Financial. I started investing in my 20s. I invested through the dot-com crash and the Great Recession. I started caring for other people's money in 2018, and I truly enjoy sitting down with my clients, understanding their wants and needs, as well as what keeps them up at night. Whether my friends just want me to invest a little of their savings or want me to work with their tax and legal professionals to strive towards optimal efficiency, we can do it all. I believe communication is key to helping my clients reach their goals. For if we are faithful over a few things, we shall be given more. Contact me at scott at soonerwealth.com. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker, dealer, member, FINRA, and SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Garrison Financial and Cambridge are not affiliated. This communication is strictly intended for individuals residing in the states of Colorado, Nevada, Oklahoma, and Texas. No offers may be made or accepted from any resident outside the specific states referenced. Cambridge does not offer tax and legal advice. If you build it, he will look It's the City on Sports Podcast with Aaron Cow. I throw balls far. You want good words? Data language. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. Now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Count with The Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Garrison Financial Friday out there at Western Oklahoma. Welcome to The Skinny on Sports. Right here on 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Ever-changing landscape, or maybe not changing landscape, in college football, we're going to discuss right off the top uh, Shohei Otani, as he seemingly does every single night, does something that nobody else has ever done in the history of baseball. Uh, we got Coach Murray, Caleb Murray, the softball coach at Elk City, coming up about 9.30. And lots of other stuff we can get to as well. Right off the top, 225-9698 is your phone or the text line. 225-9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text, talk about anything. Conference realignment. NFL was on on the screen last night, Aaron Rodgers and the Jets, all kinds of things going on in the world of sports. If you're going to be outside the listening area, you can stay in touch with us a couple of different ways, kadsam.com, or download the app. Paragon app is free, and it's got everything. It's got radio stations, it's got the Penny News, it's got Big Elk and Paragon TV. Big Elk TV back, what, three weeks from right now, we'll be preparing to go down to Altus for the season opener against the Bulldogs. And, of course, the podcast, Skinny on Sports Podcast, is available wherever you find any type of podcast in that sphere. Good morning, fellas. Good morning. Good morning. Scott's back. It's been a while. It's been a while, man. It has. You got that song queued up? <laughs> <laughs> go back to uh, Go back to the old days when uh, Scotty G would get here. Yeah, yeah. It's been busy. It's been, well, I had to play in the Oilman's. Yeah, I figured you weren't going to be. That was last week, wasn't it? Uh, or no? no, last week I was out. I was at. I was at our annual meetings last week. So. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. Yep, yep. So it's it's been pretty crazy. I didn't hear you say the biggest thing that happened in sports this week. What the goat? I mean, she she proved herself. Diana Taurasi, first woman to <laughs> ten thousand points in the WNBA. <laughs> Well, this is the shortest Garrison Financial Friday yeah, so. we've had. Thanks for coming in. Welcome back. Oh, look at that. There's Coach up. Murray. All right. Uh, sorry. Anyway, moving on. That did happen last night, wasn't it? See, was it last night? I, I can't believe that you didn't mention that. It was coming up in the rundown. I just oh, haven't got okay. there yet. Um, what, it, what is happening out west right now? Um, for the last, gosh, two weeks to – month it seemed like every single day will be the death day of the pac 12 and especially this week once colorado made the jump now you hear the other three the the other three corner schools are coming with arizona first making way for oregon and washington to maybe go to the big 10 and then arizona state and utah being forced quote unquote to to lower themselves but go to the big 12 and then this morning, or late last night, and then of course this morning, you see these a, a meeting of all the presidents, and they're circling back to that Apple deal that was in the low twenty millions. 
but promises of subscriptions. What has happened? You got me. I, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. So there, it can only be a, a couple of things, right? One, somebody came in or Apple sweetened the pot to start. Because, or two, Oregon and Washington got their feelings hurt by the Big Ten when it was reported last night. They were only offered somewhere between 35 and $40 million for their share to start, which that number is upwards of 60 for a full share in that conference. And so then they had to kind of circle back and think, okay, is it worth the extra – is the extra money going to pay for the extra travel? Yeah. I. <laughs> it's, it's insane. I mean, this entire – College football is a disaster right now. It's it's crazy. I can't believe – what about the fact that the Florida State is still talking so heavily about leaving there? It's, it's like a $120 million buyout. Yeah, so I tried to explain this yesterday. And Florida State is just a child at daycare That's... throwing a fit. <laughs> That's all they're doing. Because it, the one thing that we've seen throughout all of this, and I'm talking clear back to like 2011, 2012, when Missouri and Nebraska and A&M you know, would started this whole thing. The grant of rights is ironclad. You are not getting out of that. No. And Florida State has, what, 13 more years worth of that? And I've heard Trammell say it a couple of different times when discussing this specific aspect of it. What are they going to do? Get sued? You make let's say let's say they go to the Big Ten, and they were they were able to get sixty million a year. So you get sixty million a year for six or seven years, then you lose the case to the ACC. We got to turn around and pay them four hundred ninety million. That's a good point. That ain't happening. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> that bankrupts the university. Yeah. So the, I mean, I I, I did see I did see it, it, and it's back to the Big Twelve here. When all when 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 the first stuff happened, and then you heard you know it was OU Texas and whatever combination of everybody else going west that the Pac twelve initially eventually squashed, but I guess at that point, that that Grand Alliance went away because there wasn't a conference. Yeah. To, to, hold to, it to hold it together. And so maybe that's what Florida State's, you know, if they can talk seven or eight teams into going different they're ways. Talk, they're not going to talk seven or eight teams. There's two teams. There's maybe three. I know there is. There's two teams because Miami is not relevant. No. They, they – Miami is – they think that they are a program, but they're basically the same thing. They're basically Wake Forest and – and the rest of what the ACC is. There's only two teams that make up the ACC. And Duke and Wake Forest and all of the other teams, they're not going to let Florida State go. They got the golden goose. You know, I mean, they got the goose that, that, that makes the golden eggs. They're not going to let those teams go. They're not going to let them out of there because they're not even going to get as bad as the ACC's grant of rights deal is. They're not going to get anything better. You think Wake Forest is going to get more than $20 million a year from somebody? No. Absolutely not. Is Florida so. State, with with their grumblings and, and not liking what the deal they're in and wanting out and all this stuff, is it, a, is it a way to get more money out of the ACC? Kind of, okay, let's make it, make it sweeten the pot for That's us. That's probably stay. what it is, yeah. You know, hey, hey. We're, we're, you know – we're we're that's what they said we're that they're tired of of everybody's getting a fair share they want it to where you know I'm saying they're no going to get a bigger no piece one's of the tuning pie. in to wake forest and georgia tech they're tuning in to florida state versus whoever we're playing but there's more eyeballs but, on us but that's a good point right back there right back to the pac-12 again who's going to pay more than 20 million dollars a year for washington football N- how many how many eyeballs are they bringing to the set well and that that's what's not very many, but way more than a whole bunch of the rest of them. That's yeah. what's crazy about it. Um, I mean, I think you could make the argument that there's six or seven ACC schools 
that would not, I'm not talking about move the needle, but at least not cost for what they would get. You know, North Carolina, big, nat- I mean, it, it's a big school yeah. with, with lots of, you yeah. know, the alumni bases spread out all across. Virginia's that way, even though they've been horrible at football, but they're a big, you know, one of the big power state universities. And the Big Ten would love to have them just because they're smart. That's exactly right. From the academic side. See, that's what yeah. that's what doesn't make sense about this to me is when you see Florida State and Clemson to the Big Ten, that's not – that that makes zeros. They, they, they were a total cultural school. They fit in the They're SEC. Party schools. They fit the SEC, not in the they, Big they, Ten. They need to start a conference with Arizona State. <laughs> or come this way. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that one doesn't ever make sense. But here's the – I think maybe with with the Pac-12 stuff slowing down and somehow it survived. I mean, the Pac-12 surviving this might be even more impressive than the Big 12 surviving after, uh, you know, when, where everything stood. But I think what we're actually learning is the teams and the schools that move the needle – are either in the Big Ten or in the SEC. Yep. There's not anybody left. Well, yes, there is. There's one left, and that's Notre Dame. That right. moves the financial needle. But outside of them, there's no one left that truly does that. And so I was always fairly skeptical of the Washington, Oregon to the Big Ten because why? They yeah. don't add anything. Yeah. Once Oklahoma, Texas, and USC – found their way into those two conferences, the big-time power broker programs are all there. They're all gone. So why would they be forced to have to – and the Big Ten proved this because they they offered Oregon and Washington about a 60% share. Yeah. And I think it hurt their feelings. Yeah. Because they thought they were more important than what they really are. There you go. Latest realignment news. Of course, last night, this is all coming from Pete Thamel from ESPN, who's been on top of it, saying that it was about 10 o'clock last night, Arizona deal with the Big 12, expect to be finalized soon. Now, as of 20 minutes ago, have you seen this? Well, Ross Dellinger put that they're discussing a grant of rights in the Pac-12 right now. Right now. Yes. And there is very strong indications that Oregon will sign it. They're leaning to stay with the Pac-12 like we've talked about which could s- well, tell, I'll tell you which what, might I'll, keep Arizona. You I'll know, tell you what the, what, what the deal is, what's going on there, and that is that the, the Pac-12 said, well, hey, if they were going to give you 65%, we'll just give you 125%. Yep. Uh, that's a million percent what's happening. And, and then if we get the viewers, then you have to let everybody else have out of the, out of the viewership. But so now what you're saying, okay, so here's a big question. Did the Big 12 screw up? Should we let Colorado? Colorado doesn't bring anything into this conference. Now, if Colorado had brought Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah because they're, the, the hand was forced, they did. But alone, what does Colorado bring? Yeah, I don't think they're going to be alone. I don't think so either. I think I, Arizona's coming. I yeah. think they – I the think Big 12, Arizona's coming. Big 12 knew this is a domino effect. If we can get Colorado – that's what I'm saying. If yeah. if if the Pac-12 somehow manages to hold it together, then the Big 12 screwed up because there was no reason to share anything with Colorado. Oh, yeah, just by themselves. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. It goes back to my argument about quality versus quantity. Yeah. I mean, what? like when the Big 12 went to get teams like Cincinnati and Houston and those guys, I question it going like Where's you know okay you're you're getting quantity, but is it is there quality? They've had their days in the sun football wise. Houston, Cincinnati, Central Florida, sure, but they're still kind of one of those group of five teams that are making this big leap all at once. Well, Same thing it, about it, Colorado. My question was, where's the quality there? It but doesn't I, matter because not, the the numbers are already there. They are not taking away from anything. The thirty one point seven uh, million dollars. It talking. doesn't that's matter. That's true. I didn't think about that. It the doesn't Big matter. Twelve actually gets more money the more well, they, teams they get. They they're guaranteed thirty one point seven for everybody up to sixteen. Yeah, Guar- that number is set in stone. Yeah. Now there's been a lot of talk that with kind of what Jared's saying, 
if you start filling it with filler, ESPN is like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, too bad. That yeah. contract is signed. Yep. But filler isn't Arizona, Arizona State, Utah. No. What filler not. could be is Colorado San and Diego UConn, State. Something like that. I, I, I mean, everything about Arizona says they're coming no matter what. Yeah. Now we'll see if they can be lured back by whatever's happening. I want to know, is this just a Hail Mary by George Kliakoff or whoever set up this meeting, like the la- trying to keep the gang together? Sure. Or is there really some smoke to, okay, wait a minute. They might really keep this together. No, dude's about to lose his job. <laughs> Get the presidents together, man. I'm about to lose my job. All yeah. right, so here's Jason Shear. This guy's been all over it from out in the Pac-12 area. Arizona was planning to go to the Big 12 after last night's meeting. Coaches were informed, and it was full steam ahead. We have said it's not over until it's over, but it would still be one of the most shocking turnarounds I've ever seen if Arizona isn't in the Big 12. There you that was go. 31 minutes ago. There you go. And that's a great ad for the Big 12. I mean, got an incredible basketball school. Could be a – it. I mean – We've always thought that Arizona was a sleeping giant when it came to football. They just they never done great, it. Great, yeah. great recruiting grounds. They just never seem to get over the hump. They've been a team like Iowa State. Every once in a while, they'll get a big win, maybe have a nice season, and now like Iowa State right now is down. Yeah, Arizona has been down, but they've been up. I mean, they've well, it's been years, but they've been to a Rose Bowl. Yeah. Well, and here and here's the thing about Arizona. Just over the last what decade? Think about. From a recruit, how much better the high school football has been in, in that area yeah. than it ever was before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of huge, big time recruits that have come out of that area in the last ten years, and that would seemingly only be growing. Mm-hmm. And especially if this thing does end up falling apart, it, in, in, you know, all of a sudden California is a totally different place. Yeah, than it is right now. And if and you're th- Arizona, th- the people start moving. Away from there, well, that's a good point. Down to the down to those, yeah. those Phoenix schools and that kind of thing. And if you're Arizona, do you want to be? It's probably another argument, but what has better recruits, Texas or uh, California? That's why I think there, Deion Sanders wanted in the Big Twelve so he can get back into the recruiting hotbed of Texas. Oh sure. Well, California's got it too, though. That's that's why it's always. But been how such long a is it going to stay? That, that that's, that's, that's my question. question. You know, with the, with the changing landscape of, of the world. And yeah. Jared brought that up a couple of years ago. Is California or the the way that people think there? Is that moving away from letting kids play football? I mean, that that culture, you know. uh, that culture of the Pac-12 of just kind of lackadaisical, whatever. We're playing football. It's not as passionate as it is in Central America or Southeast America. It's not. And or, if I'm a, if I'm a school, I I want to. L- detach from that area from that conference and get into an area like Oklahoma and Texas and hell even Kansas that a little bit more passionate about college football than say Californians are hate to be blunt but they're soft over there <laughs> they too are. many avocados well <laughs> it's the Newsom effect they're just soft yeah, that's why guy ran away from the SEC to yeah. coach USC. Well, here's Brett McMurphy, the exact opposite take of the Jason Shear guy. At the last, it's 37 minutes ago. At the last minute, Pac-12 may stay together and sign a grant of rights. After Monday's media rights offer, Pac-12 had multiple Zoom meetings. Arizona's Bobby Robbins, I assume the president, appears fully committed to the Pac-12. So much so that one participant said, "If Arizona leaves, he should win an Oscar." Well, that's that is a complete one eighty <laughs> on, and there's so much smoke, you know. And yeah. I, mean, the, I can't imagine. So, yeah, like we said with the the, and and that's so then because I would imagine that the only thing that's keeping Oregon and Washington in the Pac-12 is that they're going to get more than the than other teams. So then. I mean, you can't offer everybody more than than the other teams, you know? And, I mean, who is Utah in all of this? Utah better step off their high horse because if the Pac-12 falls apart, 
They're and the Big cr- Twelve and the Big yeah. Twelve decides, hey, you know what? We'll take Arizona and and Oregon and Washington. Yeah, and Arizona yeah. State and Utah can step away. Yeah, you're toast. Yeah, shouldn't have thumbed your nose. Okay, that's that's going to continue to roll. Who knows where that's going to be by the time Very uh, Monday rolls around? Now, last thing. How about what one guy has done to the finances of one American sport? Lionel Messi. There you go. I saw last week, and I had this all teed up for you on Friday, and then you weren't there. But I, <laughs> I, I think it was Columbus, the owner of the team in Columbus. They have in, in a pa- the, the, the package that they had put out you know, mid season or whatever, half a season, there were seven games. And the ticket revenue off of that was like seven million bucks. And the ticket revenue off of the Miami home game was ten million bucks. One game. I saw that. So I took a peek down at Frisco on Sunday. Toyota Stadium. So they play messy Sunday and then like in the next week or so they uh, Austin, the team from Austin comes up there. Any guess at like just the percentage difference in the seat prices for the Messi game versus a thousand percent? It was over a thousand percent. Yeah, there was like like on which which is different than football because like the the sideline nearest the goals was like where everybody wanted to be, and I guess that makes sense because you want to sure. be where he scores, right? As you know, and so you don't why isn't that the, the way of football? The, you don't want uh, the fifty, anyway. yeah, because yeah, well, I mean, it's that's, further down there. I would rather be in the middle, but I would too. But anyway, like on the side, tickets for the Austin game were like sixty bucks a piece. Tickets for the Messi game anywhere from eight hundred up to twenty seven hundred dollars a piece. The, the Taylor Swift of professional yes. soccer, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good analogy. So he's only he, he's he's only making like fifty five or sixty million salary. As I got into this, with all the I mean, speaking of Apple TV, Apple they're paying him. Yeah, he's got a cut of the TV deal. He's got a cut of the deal with like Coca Cola or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's got a cut of the team. It's looking pretty smart. Isn't it's he? like one point one billion by the yeah. time it's all yeah. said. Looking done. pretty smart. Yeah, see, this is actually a subscription-based performance thing for Apple TV that could work. Yeah, with Lionel Messi. Sure, he's he's, yes. he's looking at not over there. Washington State football. <laughs> he's looking over there at Mbappe after he signed that yeah. big deal in Saudi, and he's going, "You're an idiot." Yeah, guess what? <laughs> I've got a billion in my head. <laughs> no, I'm, but it's it's amazing though. And and then I was telling Gabe because Gabe's a big soccer guy. We all know that, but. I think you see when once you see him step in there, and he just dominates mm-hmm. at thirty six years old. Yeah, and I I think dominates this, a lower tier talent. That's what I'm saying, I, and I think that's what you see when when you start thinking of okay, how does the how does the U S World Cup team coming up? How can they fare? I think you see kind of the the issue, right? Because some of those MLS guys are on that team, some but a bunch. A bunch increasingly, there's in more Europe. going overseas. That's yeah. right. And I think as you've seen the individual talent get better to where they can leave MLS and the team has gotten better. Yeah. I think this is a great illustration for like that novice soccer fan that wants to see Messi play and then follows the World Cup. Like th- this shows you where it kind of yeah. how it needs to go because he's dominating at 36. What if he was prime Messi? Yeah. My God, he he'd score five goals. He'd score five goals a game. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. How much would you pay to see him? Realistically, I'm a if you had the opportunity, to ask. if you had the opportunity, He's, Mr. Someone, Chinch is going to be looking for free so tickets. Your phone, I can already tell. <laughs> your phone rings this afternoon, Scott. Your phone rings. Hey, man, I got a ticket. I know a guy that can get you a ticket down here to Frisco to watch <sighs> Messi. See, what, this is, what this is, is your, the same thing that drives my wife crazy because you, she's like, "Let's go see so and so. They're playing in in at the at the deal in Oklahoma City, you know, a musician or something." And I'm like, "We can 
just turn it on and <laughs> sit out by the pool. Oh, your, your <laughs> wife asks you before she buys tickets to oh. concerts? <laughs> Ouch. Ooh, what a I concept. Struck a nerve right there. You know, it's, a, it's amazing to think just maybe it's age, maybe it's just – the comfortability or the the ease with I'll t- which I'll tell you what it's, I'll tell you what did it for me. You want to know what did it for me? What? I can't remember what year it was. We went down to OU Texas, and we spent a fortune, and they kicked our butt. Yeah. <laughs> and if you've ever been in the Texas State Fair after both- a loss, yeah, yeah. And we were driving home, and I looked over at Melissa and I said, "We could have laid on the beach in Mexico." for four days for what we just paid yeah. to get verbally assaulted. Mm-hmm. But this is different. You're not you're not rooting for anything. You're just wanting to witness greatness. Well, so, if he, yeah, I'll go in there and he tweak his ankle in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I get to risk. watch this, the, the, the B-class <laughs> soccer yeah. for that. And then he's got to watch MLS. 500 bucks. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> <that risk. laughs> There's always that risk that uh, Kenny Chesney falls off the stage after the second yeah, song. Yeah, that would be something to see. Hey, be, when would Jason be. Boland did it, they yeah. let you in for free about eight months later <laughs> over, <laughs> over at Weatherford. So answer the question, what is it? What can you say? I would probably I would probably pay I would probably pay five hundred bucks to see him play. How much I would you pay would. Aaron to see Tiger in his prime? Oh, that's I'd pay more to see Tiger in his prime than yeah. I mean, it's a prime. I, I mean, that's that's the difference. It's like yeah, oh, Tiger now then. Uh, hopefully, a hundred bucks <laughs> in April. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How about that? There you go. Hopefully, a hundred bucks in April is what I'm hoping I pay to see him in his one legged state. <laughs> and if not, oh well. Guess I'll go over to the par three. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really said that on air yet. Yeah, I'm going to the Masters. Yeah. Man. In April. Thank you, Kissling. You're my you're my buddy. That is awesome. Buddy for life. All right. We gotta get you out of here. That's awesome. Uh, Garrison right, Financial, what you guys got going on down there? Hey, we're we're just going through it, you know, going through people's plans, going through uh uh where people want to be, sitting down with them, helping them see the ways to make their money work the most efficiently. It's not always about hitting home runs, you know. Singles singles, a whole bunch of singles can score a whole lot of runs. I just gave you a baseball analogy. Yes, you did, and I appreciate it. <laughs> I very well appreciate it. Thank you, Scotty. Scott at SoonerWealth.com is his email address, 124 North Main. Garrison Financial. It's a Garrison Financial Friday. We'll continue to tell you all about what Scott can do. Coming up next, Elkett Softball starts Monday. Head coach Kayla Murray coming in to tell us all about the summer and what's going on tonight, actually, as well. If you want to see a bunch of old people get hurt, you got a chance out at the softball field tonight. We'll be back here on the Skinny on Sports. It's almost here. In motion is Patton. It's going to be that trap play to Garbarino up the middle. That's a 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Big Elks! Cooper Garbarino, 77 yards. We're closing in on the start of Big Elk football, which means Big Elk TV will be on the air before you know it. Wynn and Garza are the running backs. Jones under center. Austin, snap, turn, hand off to win. Jaden piles toward. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. You'll be able to watch and see if Coach Maynard's brown and white clad Elks can continue their winning ways. Snap back, play action, lobs it toward the end zone. He's got a man. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. Tucker Garza. To get your business on the Big Elk TV screen, call 225-9696 or stop by our office at 220 South Pioneer. The Skinny on Sports. Welcome back. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the sports animal. It's a Garrison Financial Friday. Scott in here. Did you just see Did you see the glow, Jared, <laughs> Coach Murray, that he had walking out of here when we started talking good things about soccer? <laughs> It was like a to- it was it was like a totally different man. A little pep in his step yes. when he was walking out. Giant smile on his face. <laughs> That's the messy effect. The messy effect. It's That's right. True. It's even right here in this studio as well. Uh, joining us now is the head coach of the Elk at softball team. Shockingly enough, starting Monday uh, with the regular season schedule, it is Coach Kayla Murray. Coach Murray, how are you doing? Doing good. Appreciate you guys for having us on. Oh, absolutely. So, how was your summer? 
uh, busy as always. Uh, you know, we same thing. We start uh, girls get out there. We start summer pride in June and just roll right into it. We just finished up our uh, summer down at Fire Lake. Went down and played uh, quite a few good squads down there. So we're excited. We're ready to go. What was the off season? It's been a longer off season than you ever had. Um, starting yep. clear back in the spring. Uh, not playing the slow pitch. So what, what was the adjustment to that, and how did you kind of have to rearrange things schedule-wise to get ready for starting in the in the fall on Monday? Well, you know, for us, of course, without having slow pitch this year, you know, I made my way over and helped Coach McClure out with some baseball stuff. Uh, he needed somebody. So, uh, you know, I tell you, I encouraged a lot of our girls to go uh, run track for Coach Peffer, you know, trying to get our – my 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 thought process was I'm trying to get my girls as fast as possible. You know, they do – Coach Peffer does a great job of, you know, not just building speed, uh, but they also lift, uh, which, you know, we've gotten big into the last few years. It's a big part of what I think our success has come to. Uh, I think you're starting to see that a lot with all the Elk City sports. Uh, I think that's kind of where we've uh, grown the most, but uh, – you know, what was fortunate for me is Coach McClure let me go out there with my off-season girls that I did have. I had about 10 of them out there, and that's all we did. Uh, you know, we just we started getting in the cage early and, and all that. And, you know, every one of my off-season girls, but I think two, you know, played travel ball throughout the spring. So my girls have been playing a lot. Uh, it's been great as far as reps and stuff. Our biggest thing now is, you know, we're – we're going to look a little different. We, we graduate girls that have been around our program for a long time. Uh, so, you know, making sure that we mesh as a team as we get ready to go next week. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, you mentioned the turnover. Have you ever dealt with something like that? You had a great, great senior class, and um, they've moved on, but you've got some good ones coming up. Have you ever have you ever had turnover like that? Uh, we haven't had this much turnover uh, since, I've, since I've been here. Um, you know, we've been uh, fortunate in having good senior groups, but they've been relatively small. Uh, you know, we lose uh, six and six girls that, you know, contributed to our program uh, a ton. Uh, the only good thing about it is, is just like that senior group, you know, we've always had to play young girls. Uh, yeah. So they get a lot of reps early. And so I think we're in a good spot as far as being ready to go and compete. What made that group so special uh, that graduated last year? Uh, well, uh, to me, it's the thing that helps make – you know the most uh, successful groups what they are and it's just you know their only goal was to win uh, I think that is important you know uh, the rest of the little stuff kind of you know falls in place you know it's not a challenge getting them to work hard you know show up for 6 a.m. weights and do those things because uh, you know they bought into that really well we saw success you know at the end of the year before uh, and even more success last year and so now these girls uh, that have been around that and seen how those girls uh, have acted you know it's kind of just laid that foundation uh, for working hard. Yeah, almost osmosis uh, for some yeah. of the young ones yeah. to be able to be a part of it in, yeah. in last year and then help them grow as they move along throughout their career. Right. Speak to your schedule, just looking at it, all kinds of teams from large school to small school. you got a few tournaments in here, festivals. Talk about your schedule and how that sets up for you. Yeah, so with our schedule, you know, our district has changed a little bit. Uh, we, uh, with redistricting, we lost Tuttle. We lost Cash and Anadarko. We're bringing them out St. Mary's, uh, bringing in a Bethany team that's uh, going to be competitive and a young Kingfisher team uh, that I've heard uh, does some really good things. Um, basically what we try to do, we, we switched up some of our tournaments. We switched up what we're going to, trying to get out there and see some of that better competition. I think that's another reason uh, for our success kind of towards the end of the year is I felt we were really battle-tested last year, you know, and most of that just came from our district. Uh, so our game plan is to, you know, get in there about 28, 30 games going in. Uh, it's a new postseason setup. It sets up perfect for, uh, for us, I feel like. Um, I love the changes to it. Um, and, and so, you know, with our schedule, we'll end going to NSU, which we've never gone to. We'll go down there and play. Uh, and it's uh, <laughs> there's not a bad team down there. So it'll be perfect for us going into playoffs to really test ourselves. What What's different about the, the playoff setup this year? So it's going to more of a college setup. So, for instance, everybody will go to regionals. So it won't be by districts. And uh, the top two teams in a district will host a regional. Uh, if you come out of your regional, so if you're the top 16 left, those 16 coaches will rank each other, and you'll play a best of three super regional based off the rankings. So uh, for us and over the years, uh, no discredit to anybody from the East, but uh, you know I'm hoping it balances some of the teams in the West because the West has been very heavy in softball on having really uh, dominant teams. Uh, so for us, I think it gives us a chance 
you know, to compete, we should be competing for the district. That's our goal every year. Uh, but, you know, our, our main goal is to get to the state tournament. We got really close, and I think this kind of lays out for us that if we take care of business, we'll have a chance to get there. I like that format. So it's it's yeah. almost essentially exactly flipped around. Yes. Instead of playing the best two out of three in by district to get you to a regional, right. you make a regional to get you to a super regional. Right. That's and then correct. I would assume top eight hosts the yeah. bottom eight. Yeah, so top eight will host uh, the bottom eight. So, you know, uh, based off our, our rankings and, you know, if we take care of business, I mean, I think that's possibly where we should and could be. You mentioned state tournament. Uh, still looking for that breakthrough <laughs> trip. Uh, it was so close last year. I yeah. mean, you think about that first game uh, against Lone Grove, nothing, nothing into the seventh inning and just didn't go you guys' way. What do you as a program have to improve upon is there something specific or just kind of program-wide to be able to take that step and break through and be the first team in Elk City history to make it to that state tournament? Well, you know, for us, uh, the main thing I've been preaching our girls is staying hungry. And, and, you know, so far based off the, you know, the quality of work that they've shown this summer, uh, I think that's really resonating with them. Uh, you know, being as close as that, I mean, obviously it was heartbreak and not just heartbreak for our seniors, you know, it's heartbreak for everybody involved. Uh, and I always tell our girls, you know, we're only as good as everybody on our team. Uh, that's something that over the past few years has really helped us as well is we have competition at every spot. So everybody has to bring their A game every day. That's what I tell them. You know, your, your goal at the end of every practice is you have to win a top nine job. And if you're not winning a top nine job, you might not be out there. Uh, you know, and, and we've seen that. Uh, last year, you know, we've had girls step up that maybe have hardly played any varsity ball, and they worked their way into our lineup last year, you know. And so uh, I think it really shows them that, you know, if you do things right and you work really hard and, and you take care of the little things, that you're going to get a shot and you're at least going to get that opportunity to show what you can do. A um, couple – feels like months ago. It, <laughs> the, earlier this summer, we had a, a group of girls in here that just fresh off of a state title, the 12U yeah. state title. Can you talk about the, the program – from the little kids all the way up, how much that helps you when they when you get them? Oh, I mean, it's it's really everything. You know, uh, when I get them as freshmen, uh, my goal is to try and fine tune them and get uh, whatever little bit is left to get out of them. You know, uh, we're very fortunate. You know, you mentioned that twelve U group. That's going to be a bunch of our seventh graders going in. Uh, that group can really play. They play a lot of high quality ball. Uh, they're really good. I had the uh, opportunity to take them down and play my uncle down at Binger. Uh, you know, to kind of see what they had. And, I mean, it was it was night and day. I mean, they were wow. really good. Uh, but that comes from also, you know, kids ain't coming in and having people in the community step up to coach those teams and, and not just, you know, anybody, people who really take it serious. I mean, every single day that I leave the field, you know, there's people up there. Hey, my team needs in the barn at 6. And they're going until 9 o'clock at night, you know. Uh, and, you know, so for me, I see what people are doing behind the scenes. I see how much they're investing. And, I mean, it's everything to do with the success of our program. It has nothing to do with, you know, just me at the top. Because, uh, like you said, and like everybody knows, uh, if you don't have a base down below, I mean, you're you're wishing for luck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just thinking we were talking off air, that group that just came through, kind of the, the foundational piece of, of that starting to grow. And, and now look what it is on, I mean – it is crazy on a on a week uh, it doesn't matter what day of the week except for Wednesday I guess yeah if you go out to that complex on both sides uh, softball and baseball it, it is just packed yeah and packed with people and young kids and I think you see that all across the not just Elk City but the whole region you know softball last year you guys almost made the state tournament there was three played in the, the slow pitch finals from around here I mean it's just and it all begins just right up that hill yeah, exactly. You know, everybody kind of gets their start up there. Uh, softball is, has done a great job of I mean, it's really blown up on the scene, you know. And, of course, you know, people go to, you know, our in-state teams, you know, of course at the D1 level, but even down D2, Raj State and stuff like that, you know. Uh, and I think what it's really done is, you know, people have taken investment. It's exciting, you know, once they watch it. And, and, and you know, I think people are buying into that. Uh, you know, we had people come out last year, and they they were saying this is the first time that I've watched softball, and they're like, I can't believe how exciting it is. You know, they're like, it's just so fast, uh, and, and you know, we want to come back. So, and I think some of that too is just the quality of product that's coming out. You know, girls are investing so much more into it. Uh, you know, and I tell our girls that all the time. Like when those people come into the stands, man, they're coming to watch you play. You know, I was like, you're the excitement. You're what they want to see. It's everything when you go watch OU, when you guys show up. So, you know, I think some of our girls have kind of really 
uh, stepped up in the thought process of what softball is and what they mean to it, not just at you know our Elk City level. Mention new faces. Uh, talk about some of them. Uh, who who were the the fans going to get to see maybe in, a, in a, either an increased role or maybe for the first time out there? Uh, some of the girls that you're going to really have to contribute this year yeah so you know not necessarily on a new face basis but we'll get uh one of our pitchers back uh you know who's going to have a big role for us uh jc uh baker you know she's been plagued with injuries she's back healthy she's been throwing uh we're getting her kind of in the right uh spot to really contribute with uh aubrey out there you know i think that's going to be important for our success is being able to rely on both of them uh you know aubrey last year i think she ended up throwing like 130 innings or something like that you know she threw a lot of softball so uh i think if we can balance that out a little bit uh that'll be better and then of course you know behind the plate uh we'll get lou wyatt you know and and everybody knows that we had abby robbins back there and what she kind of brought to the table i think the biggest benefit is uh for lou is she was able to spend a year kind of learning from uh abby and how she does things lou is very talented uh she's a really good catcher um you know, she has a presence at the plate. I think she's going to do a phenomenal job for us, and she's only gotten better as the summer's gone on. But she's going to be a crucial piece, and that's kind of what I spent my time talking to her about, you know, uh, in 4A and especially in our district. You know, you have to have someone back there that can shut down the run game. And if you don't, and you know, teams are too good at this level. Uh, so, you know, although there's pressure there, you know, I'm expecting her to rise to the occasion. And then, you know, we have some battles going on as far as, you know, replacing Riley Wyatt and a couple outfielders. You know, we got four or five girls in there. So uh, it's really coming down to the wire. There's some spots we really, you know, haven't necessarily made our decision. There's spots that we're going to use those first few non-district mm-hmm. games to really let them play themselves out. So, you know, it's a benefit for us. It's also the tough part of the job, you know, having to tell somebody, well, you did – you know enough to get out there or hey you were close but you know you got to keep working and you know but that comes with the territory you know for where we want to go that's what those teams have so we're very fortunate in that aspect it's a good problem to have it really have to make those tough decisions that is a it's a good problem to have it really is i mean we got i think 28 this year because if someone goes down you can trust that that kid will go in there and fill in a fill in a spot right absolutely you know i uh I pride ourselves on telling the girls and, and, you know, complimenting, you know, everybody as a whole that, you know, I do believe we have quite a few girls that, sure, they could go play. They could go somewhere else and play and start, you know. And uh, it's really just building that belief of, you know, what do you want to play for? If you want to play for, you know, let's get to that top end and, and let's make it happen and let's get that buy-in, uh, you know, then you're in the right place. And, and I think we got the girls in the right place, really do. Not really a question. I always want to compliment um, the fans and students. I know it was last yeah. year, and the the you talk about buying the commitment from those fans and students just showing up. Because there's yeah. times I go out there and practice with my kid during a game, you yeah. know, and it's loud and it's they're all engaged. It's not just there just to be seen. They're rooting on those kids. It's pretty cool. It's not like that everywhere. Yeah, no, it's it's not. Uh, you know. I can uh, – just a couple of quick stories. You know, when I got my start, I was I went to Binger with my uncle, and we were fortunate enough to, you know, go to the big house, win a state championship and stuff like that. Uh, and seeing how their fans were, that was the first kind of thing that I got, and it was just like creating chaos, you know. When other teams stepped on the field, they knew exactly what they were going to get. And then when I went to Duke, you know, relatively small program, relatively new, we were trying to build success. You know, we had parents out and stuff, you know, and they come in here and kind of seeing the transition over the years. And that's kind of our goal is to get our fans, you know, out there, create chaos. And uh, last year was, I mean, it's the best it's been, you know, ever. People coming out, like I said, who've never watched softball just to watch the girls play. Well, those girls feed off of energy. Yes. Uh, I'm a big believer in that, that, yes. that you know, Oh, you girls took a lot of flack for it from outside of the program, saying, "Oh, they're just being the yeah. c word," you know. Uh, but they are—that's a softball thing. Yeah. They, they, and the fans definitely help with that, right? Yeah, they. Uh, you know, I remember some of those district games, especially at home. You know, you go back to our Tuttle game, or even even Weatherford when it didn't go our way. You know, uh, there was so much. Uh, you know, and I, I I say you know Tuttle game was so much you know excitement. Uh, you know that was bringing girls to tears. You know, oh, and wow. most of that was from, you know, the parent engagement, seeing the fans are there, seeing that their hard work was paying off, and then vice versa. You know, the Weatherford game, all those girls wanted to do was win. And they wanted to win because everybody came out. They were showing the support. Uh, and it was the same thing, you know. It was in that – it was tears of defeat. So, mm-hmm. you know, it lives on the line of it, but you have to have it. I mean, you know, if, if you don't have it, it's hard to get those girls out there and to self – 
motivate all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, that's hard for anybody to do. So uh, it just makes it easy. I would expect our, you know, I'm hoping our crowds are, are what they were and more. You know, I know our girls are excited. Uh, they also understand the expectations. And that's what I told them. I was like, you know, that's part of the territory. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're going to be that team, you're going to have expectations. I was like, you, you know, everybody's, you know, the target on your back thing. So, like I said, I, I think we got them ready to go, and I know I'm excited. I know they're excited, and I'm also nervous. That's just how it goes, but, <laughs> you know, we're ready. Uh, some of those uh, people, that, parent-wise, that have been instrumental in, in kind of kick-starting this thing and, and getting it going – can actually go make fun of them tonight. What's going? What's going on <laughs> this evening? <laughs> yeah, so you know, a couple of years ago we started having our parent player game. It's kind of a it's a fundraiser for us, but it was kind of end of the year, just something to kind of take the edge off before we start playing. And you know, our parents, you know, I, I, Jeremy Robbins, Jay White, and those guys do. They really took it and they just ran with it. And and now it's a you know it's an all out competition. We bring our junior high group out there. We let them play as well, uh, and it's one to one. You know, we won the first year, and then last year the parents kind of took it away. And so uh, I've already heard some murmurs going through the the barn and stuff of, hey, we really got to play good tonight. Hey, I need you to show up ready to go. So, you know, it's on the girls' minds as well, you know. But it's always a fun time. You know, you come out, you know, get get you. I think they're going to have barbecue pulled pork sandwiches tonight. Uh, come out, and, and it is a laugh. I mean, it really is a hoot. So, uh, you know started out kind of as an idea and it's kind of evolved into this thing that we look forward to every single year and mark on our calendars oh what time does it start starts at six so six o'clock and usually the parents are ready to be done by you know <laughs> six thirty or so but we push it a little farther so <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the over under number of uh leg cramps or pulled hamstrings uh, for the parents group <laughs> well I, i'll tell you you know la- last year and the same thing here it was hot and i think we got an inning in before somebody was already grabbing calf. So, uh, <laughs> oh but no, and those parents, they take and run with it. I, I told, uh, you know, coach Gino, I said, no sliding this year. If you're in shorts, and <laughs> leg all was, up. That, that was my next question. <laughs> Will there be anybody outside of Denny that hurts themselves uh, I mean, on the I, parents' side? <laughs> I could see it, but if we were betting on it, that's who I'd put my money on <laughs> him or Dylan. <laughs> uh, it's going to be fun. Six o'clock tonight. Uh, for that uh, grudge match, one to one, parents versus the players, and then starting Monday, uh, tell us about the schedule. Where are you at Monday, and, and kind of the, throughout the the entirety of next week? Yeah, so next week's a big week for us. We get a lot of games under our belt. We open at home uh, Monday at uh, five o'clock against Lot and Mac. So we're hoping to get everybody out there. Like I said, kind of you know get the season going. I know the girls have a little nerves, but I think once we get going, it's going to be just fine. Uh, but it's a tough week. We have Lot and Mac at home on Monday. Go to Canute on Tuesday. And then the Woodward Tournament, so we'll play Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, I mean, we're looking at probably 10 games that first week. So, Outstanding. Can't believe it's already here, uh, yeah. but it is. Uh, good luck to you guys. Coach Murray, thanks for yeah. stopping by. And it's going to be fun to see kind of a new version of the Elkettes uh, this season and in the, in the seasons to come. Yes, appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Head Coach Caitlin Murray of the Elkett Softball Program. When we come back, kind of some updates. I've seen some tweets about this craziness out west we'll discuss that otani is ridiculous wrap up garrison financial friday skinny on sports right here wrapping it up for the week on the sports animal hello my name is scott garrison you may remember me as scott the barber or just as ron and carla's son i've been involved in our community since opening scott's barbershop on the southeast corner of third and main in 1998 now i'm back in the same building as garrison financial i started investing in my 20s i invested through the dot-com crash and the great recession i started caring for other people's money in 2018 and i truly enjoy sitting down with my clients understanding their wants and needs as well as what keeps them up at night. Whether my friends just want me to invest a little of their savings or want me to work with their tax and legal professionals to strive towards optimal efficiency, we can do it all. I believe communication is key to helping my clients reach their goals. For if we are faithful over a few things, we shall be given more. Contact me at scott at soonerwealth.com. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker, dealer, member, FINRA, and SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Garrison Financial and Cambridge are not affiliated. This communication is strictly intended for individuals residing in the states of Colorado, Nevada, Oklahoma, Oklahoma and Texas. No offers may be made or accepted from any resident outside the specific states referenced. Cambridge does not offer tax and legal advice. The Skinny on Sports. Welcome back. Wrapping up a Garrison Financial Friday right here on the Skinny on Sports. By the way, just as last year, if you can't make it out to one of those softball games, guess what? You can still watch it. 
subscribe. BigElkTV.com. Jay Wyatt, Dylan Satilli will be on the call this year. Um, I, I know both those guys uh, helped a bunch last year uh, along with Jeremy. Uh, so the, they'll be there once again uh, to bring you live streaming of Elk City Softball, BigElkTV.com. Good stuff. And they're going to be good. It's going to be different, but they're still going to be good. And like Coach Murray said, with the way that the youth program has developed over the years, you could just see the pipeline getting wider and wider, right, from <laughs> from down – uh, from from the T-ball all the way up through, like you said, the, the 12U team that's now going to be in junior high uh, or in middle school, I guess. It's a uh, bunch of seventh graders on that team uh, this summer. So, yeah, Coach Murray. Uh, the, the, two, uh, the two stick and ball sports coaches are in a pretty good spot right now, <laughs> yes, I'd say. They are. Yes, they are. With Coach Murray and Jay Mack both with what they've got uh, not only on their current teams but also coming up. By the way, uh, pretty cool deal last night. You know, Cash Mayfield was the Gatorade Player of the Year in Oklahoma for baseball. He was able to present uh, for for winning that award. <clears throat> he got a thousand dollar grant from Gatorade to give to a, an organization of his choice. And last night uh, he went out to the Dream League. That's where he donated that thousand oh, dollars to the Dream great. League. So that really cool. I have some more on that on the Skinny on Sports Report tonight. But uh, really, really cool stuff there. And once another congratulations to him. Well, that's great. That's a good kid doing good things. No doubt about it. Yeah, uh, man, Otani. So, you know, you know how many seasons there have been in Major League Baseball history where a guy has hit forty home runs and a hundred and fifty strikeout and, and struck out one hundred and fifty batters. Less than five. I, yeah, two. Two. I was gonna say both by him. Both by him. Yeah. Last night he hit his fortieth home run. He also. The live ball era starting in 1920. Last night, he became the first guy to reach safely in four plate appearances with two hits, two walks, a home run, a stolen base, and four scoreless innings pitched. I mean, it's every night this dude does something that seemingly has never been done in Major League Baseball history. It's crazy, and it's awesome, but it's a shame that he's playing for the Angels. <clears throat> Here's a, I mean, there's there are what six games back in the West, four or five in the in the wild card. Here's a great question on the from Scott on the text line: Is Otani the guy who plays harder when he's the best player on the on the team, or would he be even better on a better team? It's a great question. Like the big fish in the small pond, right, or would he be right. the big fish in the big pond too? Great question. Feels like he has to do all this because he is the best player on this team. That's couple games above 500 as is if he is on a on a team that's a contender wouldn't have to shoulder so much of the load or maybe he shoulders all the load i don't feel like that's in his in his uh dna i feel like that he's gonna play like this no matter what no matter what uniform he's at no matter where he's at i tend to agree yeah four back in the lost column of toronto problem is boston new york seattle all in the way of the angels with 52 games left. So they got to get on it. They'd right. gone through a pretty good – they'd gone through a really nice stretch there, what, 11 out of 15, and now they've lost three straight. Yeah, you can't lose – every loss is going to be so detrimental in that chance of just getting to that top two spot in the wild card. <laughs> that dude would be a Hall of Famer on the Bad News Bears. But I, I hope we find out I, – I agree with Scott. I do hope we kind of find out one day – Exactly. I hope it's next year. How good they can be. How good he can be. I hope it's next year. I want to see him in October. I did. Oh, and I as, too. And as a Ranger well, fan, I don't want to see him in an Angel uniform. Doing well, it, but it, I want to see greatness on the biggest stage. And to your point, the only chance we've got to see that anywhere close was the World Baseball Classic. Guess what? And it was he awesome. delivered. And it was awesome. Yes. Yeah. It was awesome. Uh, a, a text. Those high school girls also make those little eight year olds feel special. That's the soft, yeah. back to the softball, and that helps feed the I'm, younger ones into the program. That's very true. It's true, and it's when girl, when not just girls, girls and guys, when they realize how influential they are mm -hmm. to those kids. That's big. I know my girls come home talking about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know how so and so helped me at the book fair, and and. 
then we'd go watch him play basketball or softball, and we go, there she is, Dad. And she would come up and say hi to her after the game. You know, that's huge. That That's cool. That's, that's a sign of a good program. Listen, we had to go out. I don't know that we've ever had graham crackers in our house. And one day, hitting in the barn this past spring or summer, Cash was there with a giant deal of graham crackers. Guess what? Graham crackers were on the list <laughs> to buy at the store. <laughs> oh, by God, if Cash is eating <laughs> yeah, yeah. graham ca- crackers, I mean, it graham was like the, it was the, it was the it was like the special sauce. You couldn't find graham crackers in Elk City after that day. <laughs> it, it was so funny. I was like, I just kind of giggled when I was looking at the list and in, in different handwriting than mine. Graham crackers. I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> I know where that came from. That's good, uh, yeah, but it's it's very very true, and and the truth of it is, where we live in this part of the world, uh, those influences are good ones mm-hmm. for the very. I mean, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, yep. uh, that those influences are very good from it's, the it's a, it's about, older kids yeah, to the younger ones. You're building a culture, and you're building a positive <clears throat> culture, and when everybody is on the same page, coaches and parents alike, it's easy. It makes it easy. And those kids reflect on that. Okay, Jared. When we come in here Monday, how many teams are in the Big 12? 14. I think the Arizona thing gets done by today. I mean, this has been so fluid in the last 60 minutes. Can I read you a tweet from the last minute that might change your mind? (laughs) Yes, please. Please do. Per Brett McMurphy, who has been on top of this as much as anybody. Pac-12 unable to get grant of rights signed this morning and, quote-unquote, nothing has changed, end quote, as far as Oregon and Washington joining Big Ten. Ducks and Huskies still expected to be Big Ten bound when finances are worked out. Does that change your mind? Yeah, I'd say maybe 16. 16. (laughs) (laughs) 16. Listen, those two leave, then talk about an implosion of the Pac-12, absolutely. No, I, I, you, I you. still think it's going to work out exactly how our source told us it was going to work mm-hmm. out. Arizona's mm-hmm. going to leave. Maybe Arizona – Utah has been pretty silent on this stuff, at least today. They really have. Arizona goes. Oregon and Washington get what they want – or closer to what they want from the Big Ten. Forces Arizona State and Utah to leave as well. <laughs> Yeah, Pac-12 is over. That sound here out of the West is the Pac-12, and I think it's collapsing. Gonna ha- I think it's going to happen uh, by the time we get here Monday. It's just, it, it, there's just, this was the last hurrah. It didn't work. See you bye. Well, I was hoping it happened today because I said by the end of the week we would know. Something. Yeah, I think Arizona may be done by by today. That's what I'm. That's kind of They may be at. done by today. This has been a Garrison Financial Friday. Thank you to Scott Garrison Financial. Scott at SoonerWealth.com is his address. 124 North Main is his location. 6 o'clock tonight, you can watch Parents versus Kids Softball at the Fiveplex. Everybody have a great weekend. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way back. Goodbye. It's almost here. In motion is Patton. It's going to be that trap play to Garbarino up the middle. That's a 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Big Elks! Cooper Garbarino, 77 yards. We're closing in on the start of Big Elk football, which means Big Elk TV will be on the air before you know it. Wynn and Garza are the running backs. Jones under center. Austin, snap, turn, hand off to win. Jaden piles toward. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. You'll be able to watch and see if Coach Maynard's brown and white clad Elks can continue their winning ways. Snap back, play action, lobs it toward the end zone. He's got a man. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. Tucker Garza. To get your business on the Big Elk TV screen, call 225-9696 or stop by our office at 220 South Pioneer.